In this part, we're going to take a look at what pivot points are and how we adjust the position of them. So the pivot is this little chappy here. You can see I've got it for this table group. And it's the point around which an object will rotate. And it's also where it will scale from. So you can see if I scale, it's all going towards that point. And it can be really useful to be able to move that pivot point. One of the most common ways that you will want to do this is just to get it into the center of the object you have selected. So because we've grouped this, it's currently taking its pivot from this tabletop, which is probably the first piece of geometry I created. And you can see that when I click on the group, the pivot stays in the same place. It's not in the center of the table as a whole. To do that, there is a nice quick menu command for it. If we go to modify, there is something here called center pivot. We give that a click and now, that pivot is bang in the center of all of this geometry, which, as I've said, can be very useful. In this case, though, it's not where I want it. I want to be able to use snapping to get this table to line up perfectly with the floor of the room we've created. So I'm going to move the pivot down to being right at the bottom of the table. What I'll also do, just because I think it's good practice, is I'm going to move it to one of the bottom corners, which is often very good for lining things up. To get into the mode where you edit the pivot, you press and hold D on your keyboard like so. You can see it gives you this mode here. And then what you can do is move this around in a kind of free hand way. So if I move it over here and then put my rotate tool on, you can see the table is rotating around that point. Of course, that's not where I want the pivot. So I'll just undo that. There we go. What I'm going to do is use vertex snapping when I'm in that pivot edit mode and that's going to help me put the pivot exactly where I want it. So I'm going to hold D again but I'm also going to hold V at the same time. You can see the icon here changes to show you that we're going to snap to something. And then I'll choose one direction at a time so I'll start with my Y axis and this now as with previous snapping will only snap to places where there is a vertex and the vertex I'm aiming for is that one there so I'll just put my mouse on it and Maya will get the picture. Then I'll do the same on the other two axes. So hold D and V. I'm now gonna do my X axis and aim for that pivot there. And finally, the Z axis. There we go. And you can now see that that pivot is exactly where I said I wanted it to be. So now when I rotate, it rotates around that point. When I scale it, it will scale. And this is one of the cool things about putting it on the ground. Now, if I scale it, if I put it in the ground first, but decide that I want a smaller table, I can make it smaller but it will stay on the ground instead of the feet of the table rising up. So that can be really useful. So now that we've got that in position, we will turn the geometry for the room back on. Zoom out a little bit, make sure I'm facing the right direction. And now you can see that it's probably a good idea to get this table into the place that we want it to be. First thing we need to do is just move it so that it's above the ground. And now we can use that snapping to make sure it sits perfectly on the ground. So I'm going to hold V for vertex snapping. I'm going to grab the Y axis. And now as long as I aim for one of these pivots, that will sit perfectly on the ground. And then all I need to do is use my move tool to decide where I want it. So I'm going to place it somewhere so that the light from the window can hit it. Something like that. And I'm actually quite happy with the size. So I'm not going to scale it up or down, but you might choose to do so if you think that yours is a little bit too big or too little. That is this step done then. In the next step, we're going to set about creating some things to put on the table, beginning with kind of a potion looking flask. So I'll see you in the next step for that. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.